Okay, so this is screencast number three and we are continuing our Excel training session. Now we need to calculate the logarithm of that function here, the logarithm, natural logarithm of a square root of x over y. Um, there are two ways in which you can do that. There are two ways in which you can bring the logarithm function. Well, first of all, you can type in equal sign and just start typing in logarithm. So ln is the abbreviation for it, L n and when you type it in as you can see you get a list of possible functions that you that you're looking for so if i just type in l just l then it the wind the microsoft excel brings all the functions that are built into excel which are starting with the letter l okay and so here you can choose whatever you want so for example there is a natural log here there is a regular log to the base of 10 and so on so let's choose the uh, natural log. So I, I'm going to click on that and double click and then it says log of what and then you have to type in the number or a function into the logarithm. Okay and then according to the function here we have a square root of x over y. So again how do we bring up the uh, square root? Now one possible do way to do that is to use the familiar now uh, the power function so you can type power you can type power and then this function comes in so you double click then you can choose a number and then where it's when you type in the power you just type in 0 0.5 right because that would be a square root but actually because square root ha you know is used very often excel has a built-in square root function so actually, if you start typing in SQRT and the square root function comes up, so just select that, double click, and that is the square root function. Okay, so you don't need to type in the power uh, function because it's actually longer. So that, 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 that is very handy. So square root of x over y. So square root of x over y. Close the parentheses and click enter. Okay, and that's your value for the log. Again, so you can select that cell, select that small square at the bottom and drag it down. And it will do the same calculations for all the other numbers. Now you can format the data a little bit, like it's here. So here it's not a scientific notation, it's a uh, regular number notation but with two decimal places so let's select that area right click format cells number and two decimal places click OK and now you've reproduced exactly the same uh, table so the next one is a trigonometric function sine of x over y okay so let's type in the title of that sine x over y parenthesis closed and that's the title so again how do you uh, type in the sine function well you can just click on equal sign and start typing in the name of the function so sine and as you can see the excel is suggesting you the possible functions that you're looking for so you have sine function you have sine function and you have a hyperbolic sine function but we need this regular trigonometric sine function so let's select that and double click sine okay x over y so x over y sorry over y here like that close the parenthesis click enter and that's your number so again drag it down and you can change the format again format cells number two decimal places okay like that now an important thing to remember about the trigonometric functions is that in Excel when you're using a trigonometric function the number that you put in has to be in radians okay so if you have your numbers in degrees you first have to convert them into radians and then use them in the trigonometric functions in Excel okay now you can do all kinds of other things with this table well first of all let's give it a title just as it's here so let's just type in 
a table one let's give it a title using excel in the labs okay so that's good enough and then you can highlight it for example with a yellow color so let's select this area like that let's go to the home menu and fill it with for example yellow color okay like this and then you can select this area and for example highlight it with uh, whatever color you want say this blue color well like that one so that's your table now you can uh, put a frame around it like this and you're basically done so now you know how to use some really basic functions in Excel to reproduce, to make a new uh, table with some complicated uh, mathematical functions. Now, there's one thing which we haven't covered yet, and sometimes that is also very useful. For example, let's say that I want to, I want to uh, have a column which is x over y but not all x but say just the first value of x okay so for example let's say that i want to have a table a column which is x0 over y okay x0 over y so let's put the zero as a subscript okay format cell subscript like that and my x0, let's say that this x0 is this number. Okay, I'm going to highlight it with a red color. Okay, so this is my x0. I want x0 to be divided by y values. Now, if I just type in equal sign, this cell over y, like that, and click enter, for the first value, it will calculate it, it it will calculate me correctly right it's 2 over 1 and you get 2 but then if you drag it down like this then the numbers that you get are not correct because if you select for example this lower one here and if you highlight it if you click here in the function menu and then you see that it's actually calculating x which is this last x 20 over 28 while we want 2 over 28, 28. So how do we do that? Well, in order to fix a number, or a cell for this matter, in order to fix a cell in a certain calculation, you have to use the so-called dollar sign. Okay. Now, how do you fix this x? Well, let's click on that cell here, okay, and let's go to the function menu, which is here. Okay. Now, the number that we want to fix is H3. So, all you have to do is to put a dollar sign in front of H and in front of 3. So, if I click like this, put a dollar sign here and then another dollar sign here, then the dollar sign is sort of fixing the, uh, fixing the either the row or the column. In our case, we want to fix both the row and the column. Okay, so H3 is now fixed. So I click enter and I do the, exactly the same thing again. Okay, so select that cell, select that small square and drag it down. Okay, so now if I, for example, select that last cell here, go to the function, as you can see now, it's dividing this value, the red one, by 28. Okay, so this is exactly what we wanted. There are two more uh, built-in functions in Excel that you will be using a lot in the laboratories. Uh, the first one is the auto sum. So suppose you have a set of data like this and you need to calculate the sum of all these numbers. Now in principle of course you can go ahead and type in equal sign. So this number plus this number plus this number plus this number plus this number and so on right click enter and you will if you click on this number here and then go to the functions menu and the numbers that you're adding up are highlighted now but that's not a very effective way of 
calculating the sum of a large uh, data set. Now instead, let's delete that. Instead, what you can do is you can click on this auto sum built-in icon. Okay, so let's click on that auto sum here. And this uh, flashing box comes up, comes out. And it is telling you which area the Excel is using to calculate the sum. Now you can change that area as you wish. For example, you can say that I want to calculate this entire, I can add, I want to add this entire row like that. Or you can say I want to add this column. Okay. Or I want to add this entire area, for example. And it will calculate you the, the sum of that, of all the numbers within that area. Okay, so, well, let's say that we want to calculate this column. Okay, so let's select that column and let's click enter. Okay, so this gives us the total sum of all the numbers within that column. So you can check it by clicking on the function, fu function window and this uh, column is highlighted now. Now, another function which is very often used in, uh, in laboratories is the average. Sometimes you need to calculate the average velocity or average distance or average time and so on. Again, in the functions, in the built-in functions in Excel, there is a standard built-in average function. So let's type in equal sign and now type in average. So if you type A, V, E, and there you, you can already see that it says average here. So let's select that average, double click, and it tells you number one, number two, and so on. So it is asking you to choose the numbers that you want to be used in calculating the arithmetic average. Now, instead of using, you know, inst instead of typing number one, then comma, then number two, you can simply select an area in your table that you want to use for arithmetic average. So for example, let's say that I want to use, I want to find the average of all these numbers in that column the average of x values, okay? So I have selected that area, close the parenthesis, and I click enter. And now it gives me the arithmetic average of that column, which is 11. So that is very handy. Okay, so now you've learned how to use some basic functions in Excel. Uh, when you're in the lab, um, in addition to making tables and calculations, you also need to do some writing. You need to write an introduction and so on and so forth, some conclusions. So um, you actually need to type text. Now of course Excel is not, a, is not the software that you want to use when you typing a report. So instead you use a Microsoft Word. So how do you copy you know something that you've created in Excel into a Microsoft Word? Well that's very easy. You just select a table, for example, you select the area. Let's say I want this entire table. Okay, so I select that. I click, right click, and go copy. Okay, so I copy it. Go to Microsoft Word. So I open a Microsoft Word page and paste in the table. Okay, and my table is now in the Microsoft Word. And then you can use it uh, to type in your lab report, for example. 